Let's use Ignite to scaffold the Checkers blockchain. In order to do so, we'll need Go and Ignite installed. Then we'll issue the command to scaffold the Checkers blockchain using the code in the GitHub repo. Oops, let's quickly correct the URL and then carry on. Great. Now scaffolding is going to take some time, so the recording has been sped up a little in this screencast. Fantastic. This is what we want to see. It's created a new blockchain called Checkers, and it's put it in the Checkers subfolder. Now we can take a look in the Checkers subfolder and explore the files that Ignite has created for us. You'll discover comments like this one. It's important that you don't remove them because these are placeholders that are used by Ignite scaffolding. Let's go ahead and move into the Checkers subfolder and start the chain. We'll say Ignite, Chain, Serve. What this is going to do is start the blockchain for us. Now again, this is going to take some time, so the screencast has been accelerated uh, so that we get to the next step uh, more quickly. Now you won't get this error the first time that you run this command, but you might get this error later. What it's telling you is that there's data in an existing blockchain and it's not compatible with the binary that you're trying to start. What you can do when you're developing, not in production, is you can issue the reset once flag in the command and that will send your blockchain back to block zero and it's a whole new day and therefore the data on the chain is compatible with your binaries. Okay, the chain is up and running and at the end there you can see there's a Tendermint node URL and a URL for the API and even a token faucet. Now let's go ahead and open the URL for the blockchain API. Fantastic. The API shows you all of the endpoints from the different modules such as bank, distribution, governance, and it even shows you documentation about inputs, outputs, and what the functions do. You also have a way to interact. For example, we can grab an address and use this bank function to check the balance of a user. We'll just put the address right here and then hit execute and then scrolling down we can see exactly what the API request looked like and the response that comes back. And it shows us the amount and the denomination of that amount. Let's do that again and this time we'll use Bob's address. Great, so Alice and Bob both have stake tokens and application tokens. Okay, so let's fold that up and then scroll down to see what else is on the API console. We have to scroll down quite a bit. quite a bit to get past all these API endpoints and eventually we'll come to the models panel. 
And in the Models panel, you'll see that units like DNOM are clearly defined. Now let's leave the blockchain running in the first terminal and open a new one. We'll head into the Checkers subfolder and check the status. Some interesting feedback here. You'll see the latest app hash and you'll see the latest block height. Let's just wait a moment and do it again. You'll see the latest app hash has changed and the latest block height has moved up from 134 to 155. The output can be a little more clear if we pass it through a little JSON processing. Command line help is available for every command in the CLI. For example, we can ask for help on checkers. We can then drill down and ask for help on checkers status. We can ask for help on checkers query. You'll start to see that the modules that were included in checkers have their own help. All of this is inherited and pieced together by the Cosmos SDK. You can even drill in on specific commands like the balance command that we use through the API console. And if we pick up one of the addresses, we can come back here and inspect that address with the command line. And sure enough, there's Alice's balance in the native token and the application token. We can also get that in a JSON format, and if we like, we can pass the response through a JSON processor to make it more readable.